Welcome back. So now we have our interface. The next step is going to be creating the first infrastructure or the actual implementation on how we do all of this. How do we create a customer? How do we, how do we read all our customers back? How do we actually work with data? And that's the goal of this lesson right here. We're going to start out by in the infrastructure folder, right? So if I go back to the drawing right here, you'll notice that now I'm going to start working down here where we actually implement our different information, right? So now we've created this guy and we've made the interface for the domain service. Now we're going to try and use it and actually create something so that we can start working with data and actually storing it. Let's just try and add a new project right here. And let's just create, this time it's going to be .NET specific. Okay, so it's going to be .NET Core specific, sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the class library this time, but notice I'm not picking the standard library, it's the class library. If you can't find that, go into .NET Core library, and there's the class library. I'm going to pick that one, I'm going to say next. I'm going to keep .NET Core 2 one, next. So I'm going to call this customer app infrastructure static data because this is going to contain a static list. Right? Later on, I'll make a new one called data that we're going to build the real SQL solution in. Okay, so now we have a new project. I'm going to add this and it's inside infrastructure right here. Let's just get rid of this class right here. Just to, uh, that's just annoying. There we go. So now we have our new project right here. And in there, we're going to make a new folder right away. So I'll add a new folder. And that's going to be called the repositories. Because that's going to keep contain all repositories in my solution. Now we're only probably only going to end up with a customer for now, but let's say you also had order, order lines, whatever you had, that's going to be available in here as well. So now we have that access up and running as well. And then what we can do is create our first repository right here called customer repository. So I'll just make a class, customer repository. There we go. And notice this time that it's an empty class, not an interface, and it's called customer repository. Let's just keep the constructor for now. One very important thing is that right out of the box, I'm going to just add iCustomer repository right here. iCustomer, rep notice I can't find it. iCustomer repository. Now why can't I find it? You guys should know that now. Yes, you're right, of course. I didn't add the dependency. So I'll just edit reference or add dependencies and say I need the core and I need the entity down here. I need both of them because I need the core to kind of get um, the I repository, and I need the entity to kind of get the customer entity right. I'm going to need both. There we go. So now I can do a command dot and it'll pop up hopefully and tell me if I don't want to use um, the beautiful, beautiful domain service right here. There we go. Now that one is imported. Let's just get rid of the reusing for now. We can import it again if we need it. Sweet. It still complains, and that's because even though I call myself now, I use the contract customer repository. I haven't actually implemented the functions that I need to call myself. Again, remember, this is a contract. So to be able to use the interface customer repository and call yourself a customer repository, you need to have all these functions, right? So we need to now go from actually having an interface or a contract into actually having an implementation. So you can right click right here and do the quick fix if you want to. And that should be pretty much the same thing with the command dot. Do you want to implement the interface? And I'll say yes, and boom, I get all the functions in here. But notice they all just throw an exception right now saying, I'm not implemented, I'm not implemented, and neither am I, blah, blah, blah. So none of them are implemented. Let's just move, move the delete one to the bottom. So it's kind of the CRUD setup right here. There we go. So this was all I had to do. Now I've implemented my new customer repository, right? But, well, I'm not quite there yet because I actually, of course, need to start implementing all of these different methods, right? It's not enough just to have the repository, but now it's available and we can start using it later on. Sweet. So how do we actually do this? Well, we need to, of course, start looking into our program. And since we're going to make a complete copy of what we already have, just in a new layer, we need some kind of static list and account and stuff like that to kind of start working with our setup right here. So let's just start by copying these two guys and adding them inside our new repository because that is going to be the fake database for now, right? It's going to be a local list that represents a list of customers and some kind of ID that can count up, right? So it's still being a, a fake in-memory database that as soon as I restart the program, it'll be reset, kind of sucky, but it's a way just to kind of explain to you guys how we can make our first customer repository 
with a fake data set. Later on, we can easily change this and we will. But for now, let's just make it simple. Sweet. Next lesson, what I want to do is I want to start adding these create, read, update and delete, just like we have them over here in the program. So I'll start using, uh, moving the storage or the domain logic on how to work and save these guys from the program and slowly start moving them into the repository. So let's do that in the next lesson. See you next time. Have fun.